hit a bunch of stuff that Kyle talked about. We each have a list here that we can rattle through. Uh, do you want to start? We can, we can kind of alternate uh, alternate topics here. Yeah, I mean, I I'm no longer counting on this human being, and I was. I think you and I we definitely talked about it when they drafted him. Uh, we get asked about I'm him a lot. Pretty sure, pretty sure we made a video about him, but Jalen Hurd did. Uh, is just not practicing, you know, and it's, it feels, this is not your two now, this is your three. Uh, and I've just been around this league long enough to know, like sometimes this guy just got dealt, you know, the shitty injury luck because it's just missed his first year. Then his second year, it's like, okay, this is the year. Then he breaks his back. <laughs> You're like, oh my God. And now he's had missed the entire season. Where you're like, oh, it's January 1st. It's May 25th. So you've missed the entire season. May, we're almost into 6 one That's six months. That's a lot of time. And he still just can't practice? Like, that's – I'm sorry, guy. I, I mean, I'm not – I would like to watch him play, but I'm out. Like, I'm not I'm – not, I'm expecting nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess one of my questions would be, he had an ACL in August, right? I so, thought he broke his back. Well, he had, he had the broken back. Yeah, but August is when he tore his ACL. I didn't realize he tore his ACL. Now I'm getting my. I don't he know, tore his ACL last year. I thought. Back. I thought. I thought he broke his back. But uh, he or was that two years ago. He had that injury. Was rookie year. Okay, that, I'm getting my injuries mixed yeah, up. That was the one that came after he had that sweet. You know, remember he had the sweet touchdown in the. Uh, what was a touchdown right? In the You're right. He 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 tore his ACL in practice. So. Yeah, we're talking about so Jalen Hurd. Does he little more little more understanding then? Yeah, but right? again, I mean, like I, my my question would be, is he you just see doing, Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow was at practice today. Yeah, my Jalen Hurd question is, is he the same place Nick Bosa is? Like Bosa's just doing it at his place. Jalen Hurd's just doing it here. Are they at the same point in their recovery? I don't know. Right, it's hard to know because they're not together. But we do know that if Nick Bosa was here, he would not have been on the field for the 49ers today. Probably about a month off, right? Because Bosa was the third game of the season, August twentieth. Right. That was probably September twenty. Yeah, so you're a difference of thirty days. It should be around but the just, same period. Yeah, I, I saw Joe Burrow just throwing a practice today, and he was five or six games into the season with a devastating knee injury. But to me, it's just it's hard for me to depend on this guy. Yeah, and part of it is you don't like I, Nick Bosa has been healthy long enough for me to know what you should be getting when he comes back healthy, right? When Bosa comes back from injury, I know what it's supposed to look like. We don't really even have an idea. When they drafted Jalen Hurd, the question wasn't, does Jalen Hurd ever healthy? The question was, is this guy good enough to contribute? He changed positions. So we don't even really know Remember? that, right? He was a running back at Tennessee, transferred to Baylor, played wide receiver because he didn't want to play running back anymore. So this is a guy that had a pretty, like, that's a pretty strong you know, position change. And it worked. He had some success at Baylor. It was a fascinating prospect to Baylor. And then all of a sudden, he hasn't been able to work on his craft because of a broken back and a torn ACL. So it's just one of those things in the NFL. You can't make the club in the tub. Part of the reason they say that is because guys not in the tub at practice are just getting better. Right. Kyle kind of alluded to that today. Like part of playing football is like you got to practice football because really you practice infinitely more than you play this sport. I guess now in most pro sports, that's the case. But like in in, co in college basketball, right? If I just went to like uh, Mick Cronin and we were just bullshitting, I bet UCLA basketball. Practices He'd be like, "You want to come on the staff? Right? You fit all the requirements." <laughs> Bald. But do you, don't they practice a lot in college basketball? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, like they and you obviously the day practice. of the game in college basketball. Yeah, I guess NBA kind you of just, shoot around too. But. You you just got to get better at practice, and he just hasn't been able to practice. Yeah. Like it, it might be difficult for him to make the team, even if he quote unquote is healthy. Signing, they keep adding receivers because right. they can't depend on guys like this. They got they got five running backs. They got twelve receivers. I mean, they got a lot of guys. Uh, speaking of injured guys, D Ford been here since February, quote unquote, and made a lot of strides. Is what Kyle Shanahan said today, but it's sensitive because it's a back injury, and that is sensitive. Sounds like he'd been there a lot because they sent him home at one point in time because he'd been there too long. Kyle said to see his doctor um, and maybe see his family a little bit. Um, so I, I give you know I give D Ford a lot of credit. It's not for lack of effort, but he's played in 
you know, he played in one game last year. He appeared in 11 games the year before, though it doesn't quite feel like that was the case. And the tough thing with him is it's, you know, Jalen Hurd has an ACL. I, I know what it looks like when that's healed. This doesn't, I don't know, there's really not a lot of optimism that whatever D Ford's dealing with in his back can just ever go away for good, right? It doesn't feel that way. I think they would gladly sign up for 2019 D Ford, right? The 11 games. And he, I think he had seven or eight sacks. Like he was a product. Forced, he would just, you felt yeah. his presence. Forced a couple fumbles. Yeah. I, honestly, I'm probably more now that I know it's the ACL, not the back. I, I would say Jalen, I'm more bullish that Jalen Hurd makes a play than D Ford ever plays a snap. And the problem is, remember, when they were in their kind of money predicament, they moved some of his money back so it's like he's not they can't just kick him to the curb for free right he's not going anywhere i mean where he may go is injured reserve again but that's like they have to keep him because i would would you would you agree if d ford was zero cap casual you know had zero dead money or whatever they would have cut him this offseason obviously yeah yes because they have no i mean they're optimistic because you have to be because they don't have a choice I shouldn't say they're optimistic. They're still trying because they have to because they don't have a choice. But I don't know how optimistic you can really be, although you appreciate the effort from the guy. Um, yeah. But Kevin on YouTube says about uh, – I heard he had numerous concussions at running back. That's part of why he moved to wide receiver. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the beat that what scouts had said, it was more that – that's part of it, but it's I, people questioned some stuff with him. Like he was not, he, he was a question. There was just some question marks behind it. I don't think it was as black and white as what's been reported. Let's just say that. I, I, I don't want to say it because I don't have all the information off the top of my head. And clearly it's been a lot out of sight, out of mind for a while, but I, I don't think it was as black and white as that. I think there was some Tennessee getting him out of there. He's a very talented player. Like most guys couldn't make that transition. Part of it is, he wasn't a running back size. I mean, you and I remember going out to that first practice. He's huge. Yeah. I mean, he's six four. Like that's not most. That's the, he'd be the tallest running back. And like this isn't the OJ Simpson days when running backs were six two, six three. Most of them feels like most running backs now are like five ten to six six feet tall. Like Trey Sermon is on the big end of you know running backs. So yeah, it just Tennessee not a bastion of stability either. One of the worst jobs in America. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, do you have another one? I've got a couple more here. Uh, just, and listen, Kyle never goes that in depth on the contracts, but this is what I was saying about just quick to sign everyone. I think ideally you just want to get good players signed, but like if Fred Warner plays this year, like to me, if I'm the Niners, like I'm not offering Fred Warner a historic deal, right? And it's risky because he has one year left and he's a third round pick. Like I, I give him a lot of money, but I'm not probably giving him the amount that he, or I mean him, like his camp wants. And I just, I could see that the being a little off money wise, like we're just not going to give you $60 million guaranteed, but you off like, Hey, we'll give you, we'll give you the deal. Buy out that last year. And that's usually why I think sometimes that you see, remember a couple years ago, Michael Thomas held out. Now he was so important. Like if Fred really wants to get, what he wants, the move is pretty simple. Do not show up when training camp starts, right? We said that about George. If you're going to want your historic amount of money, because the Niners typically get pretty good discounts with Bo go back to Bowman and Willis, you got to hold out. Because I, I would imagine the Niners are not offering as much cash as people would assume. Well, that's how we saw things play out with Kittle, right? And ultimately, George Kittle's rich. But I know, it's Zenny's. But if he had held out, I actually have an, a, a, a friend who just did a business deal with Zenny. Uh, but uh, not in the same realm that um, that we are. But uh, give me some interesting. Um, yes, that's a major company. Because uh, I was like, well, have you noticed all the money? And they were like, well, I, I spent the money. Um, you get a contact? Can he give you an email? We could reach out. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll follow back up. I think I could get maybe a connection to the uh, to the head of the company. But um, uh, a Fred Warner. You know, I think. Well, I know what most people think when you hear Kyle Shanahan say, uh, Fred's a guy I plan on being here forever, right? Like he's the kind of guy you want to build around. It's similar tone as, you know, what you said about Buckner. And uh, I think he meant it about Buckner. The difference was they kind of felt like in that draft, clearly, because I'm just basing on the way they operated two things. One, 
okay, Armstead and Kinlaw, we can kind of build this up. They don't really have the same – there's nowhere else to go right now if Fred Warner's not – now, maybe next year you could find a guy. But right now there's no clear path to, like, replacing Bo- Fred Bowman Warner. ain't walking through that that's, door. <laughs> that's – well, he did last time we were there. Two years ago he was there just to visit and say hi to some people. Remember that? We saw Didn't they give him a standing O? Was that, was that when he retired as a Niner? That was when he retired as a Niner. Who gave him a standing O? Yeah. Well, remember he walked out to the huddle and oh, they, like the, the place during, came yeah, around yeah. and clapped him on yeah. the field. Yeah, he was wearing his Louboutin high. Remember, it was got a little weird when Kyle cut him. Yep. So it was a little mending of the fences. Yep. But we still thought he had, he felt like he had some football left, and he did play some more. But you know, you understood it. Okay. Um, but there's no, you know, Fred, that's the leverage Fred has. Is this, they're not trading him to the Colts for a first. To get somebody, well, to some me, that, back to what I said, guy, his move, if he really wants to get an extra 5-8 guaranteed, do not show up. Right now, it's not as relevant. When training camp starts, do not show We say it all the time. That is your one true, like it, I'm not expecting Aaron Rodgers to show up, are you, when training camp starts? Uh, well, considering that uh, he was in Hawaii for OTAs. <laughs> but it's, no. but that's. That's not that crazy. It's not I mean, that it's crazy, not. but like if Kyle had said today, yeah, Nick Bose is not here because he's boycotting OTAs, I'd be like, right? well, yeah. But but Rogers is asking for a trade. My my point is on Fred kind Warner. Of. Rogers is just in the people yeah. business, John. <laughs> yeah. I think Fred Warner's the move is to hold out. Yeah, uh, and I'd be surprised. I'd be. I would imagine. No, I don't. Expe- I don't expect him, it. Hey, man, look, we you saw what happened with Kittle. George, go talk to George. George seems pretty happy. You do the you, you know you do what we view as the right thing, and we'll do the right thing by you. And he'd be like, "Listen, you get thirty from the Niners. You get this is you got to give the bank account a number, but Zenny's they'll give you eighteen, and it's like it all equals. You know, actually, yeah. I am the highest paid tight end in the league, but if no Fred, one knows it. If Fred gets like an endorsement deal from a company that suddenly pops up with a bunch of Niners billboards, like at the same time, <laughs> you're like, like, wait, Fred, Fred owns Leeds." Fred Warner is yeah. the majority stakeholder in Leeds soccer. Or if you just tr- you just turn on your television during like a Giants game, it's like, I'm Fred Warner. Let me tell you about LinkedIn. You're like, okay, <laughs> something weird's going on here. <laughs> um, uh, other piece of uh, of uh, little news, I guess it was it'd been kind of rumored, but Kyle Shanahan confirmed that uh, um, Weston Richburg, the offensive lineman, is going to retire. Obviously, didn't seem like they were caught off guard by that. They've they um, they've drafted in a way, and not even drafted in a way. They they do look pretty prepared to handle that, so that doesn't seem like a shocker. Um, Jim McElwain, Colorado State, that was like one of his big dudes. Right. You know, that was a that was a guy. That's right. So I think those were it kind just, of the, I, the basics. I, yeah, you know, it's one thing to like tear an ACL cutting, right? Achilles, like that happens to humans, whether you're playing football, whether you're playing pickup basketball at the Y. Like I, I think there is just. I view it, Dr. Middlecoff, as like a tire. It's just bound to pop. There is something with being an O-lineman, a D-lineman, or even running backs in that little pile where it's like my career ended because I had six guys total weighing 2,000 pounds fall on me and I bent back the wrong way. It's like, am I injury prone or did I just have Trent Williams get tossed by Khalil Mack into my knee when I was looking the other way? You know, it's like ended my career, right? I feel those offensive linemen, when you hear like Schlereth and some of those guys talk about their shirt, can you imagine when you hear like running backs and stuff, uh, running backs get to, but maybe like a corner where it's like, you didn't even tackle or whatever. Like you understand the pain I feel in my knee. I'm 51 years old. I'm in great shape. I can barely walk. I'm always around the action. There's always 20 people around me. Right. Uh, Always people fall in the wrong way. They're heavy. They're powerful. He he had the torn patellar tendon. Then he just had, hip surgery i a buddy of mine who's super tight with joe thomas because i was like how does this guy lat like is he just lucky or he said well one thing joe is like super thomas was like a really flexible guy so like his ankle flexion his hit like joe is a super athlete because he never missed it he never missed a snap never missed a like snap yeah and he's like well one th- he's like first things first like yeah joe is physically probably built pretty well to you know some people the way you get hit, if you're extra, if you got extra flexibility, you might be able to take a hit that somebody else can't take. That 
I would, I'm, I have no flexion in my ankles or my hips. Like I'd be screwed. And they said, yeah, part of it is the NFL. You just got to get lucky that people aren't falling all, you, know, you just don't get hit the wrong way a time or two because it's, you're right. You see it so many times and it's always offensive linemen. And it's like, you know, they got the camera on the running back that just ran for six yards. Meanwhile, some offensive lineman needs three other offensive linemen to help him up and no one's paying attention. And uh, in many ways, D tackles, D tackles too, you know, when they're driving to the side and he's holding and his leg gets shattered. It's just, it's like, you're, I don't think they get enough respect. They don't, you know what it's like? It's like you're driving on the highway and nobody has side mirrors. It's like, you're just hopeful that the person who you're about to try to pass, isn't going to try and change lanes without looking because they're not going to see you and you're toast if it happens. Yeah. And luckily in the NFL, like the linemen, if you didn't have side mirrors, but you, they're all like Humvees, right? They can handle just bumping in. It's right. when a guy comes flying across, uh, you know, uh, an 18 wheeler head on. You're like, well, I, I'm a Humvee, but the 18 wheeler is going to win here. Yeah. Trent Williams and Khalil Mack tangled coming at me. I mean, bye bye Patel attendant.